In big cities like Bristol and London, there are plenty of hospitals, so patients have plenty of choice where to go to be treated. If you live in the country, though, you may not be so lucky. There may be only one hospital where you could reasonably be expected to go to. So does this comparative difference in competition make any difference to the quality of treatment or the quality of the hospitals? This is an issue that's been studied by Professor Carol Proper of the Centre for Market and Public Organisation at the University of Bristol. Competition in healthcare uh, is essentially competition between hospitals to provide services for patients in England wherever those patients want to go. So you can go to your GP and say, I'd like to travel to Newcastle for my treatment, I'm here in Bristol, and your GP can send you to a Newcastle hospital if you want to go there. Well, what happens is there's a fixed price for, any kind, for a particular kind of treatment. So if we think about a hip operation, there's a fixed price for a certain kind of hip operation, and every hospital has to charge the same. So what's in it for a popular hospital is they attract more patients, and they therefore get a payment per patient, and every patient they attract brings them more money. This policy was introduced in 2006 by the government. Prior to the policy, um, patients generally went local, though there were some exceptions. After the policy, the policy was introduced so that hospitals could attract patients from whenever they liked, and they got paid the same amount for any patient of a certain type that they attracted. So what we did was we looked at hospitals that were in competitive areas where you think the reforms would have an effect, and we compared them to the performance of hospitals in uncompetitive areas, hospitals where there is really li very little choice for the patient. And we asked, did the quality in the hospitals where there was competition improve more after the reforms than the quality for hospitals located in uncompetitive areas? What we found was that both sets of hospitals improved their quality after the reforms but that hospitals that were located in competitive areas improved their outcomes more than the other group of hospitals. So we inferred from that, after doing various statistical tests, that essentially competition had brought about a bigger improvement of quality than being in a not competitive area. Does competition save lives? It does save lives. Um, the outcomes that we and researchers at the LSE looked at were um, how many people died from cert up after admission to hospital for certain conditions, and we found that competition in the current regime appeared to save lives without increasing costs. So essentially, it's doing good things. Hospitals in competitive areas are having lower death rates and they aren't spending any more money to get those lower death rates. In another study, Professor Proper found that competition based on price was not good for patients, whereas competition based on quality is. We did studies at Bristol on the impact of the competition in the 1990s so-called internal market, in which we found that competition was potentially harmful for patients in the form that it then took. Um, essentially the reason was that in the 1990s prices were not regulated and we know that competition in healthcare where prices are not regulated tends to lower quality because people compete on costs and bringing costs down. Now one person who thinks that's extremely significant for the future of the NHS is one of the UK's leading social commentators Polly Toynbee of The Guardian. This a new health policy has been sold very much on the basis that your own cosy, friendly GP uh, will be choosing the best uh, treatments he can for you out of his own budget, which sounds very nice, but it won't in fact be like that at all. Uh, the GP consortia will be huge and rather far away from where your particular GP is, and uh, big decisions will be taken at that stage. And those decisions will be taken not just on the basis of quality, but what's really important, they'll be made on the basis of price. The importance of Carol Proper's work for CMPO is to show that when uh, companies or the NHS and companies compete on quality, it drives up quality because everybody's trying to be best. But once they have to compete on price, then everybody's trying to be cheapest and that drives quality down to the great detriment of patients. That's what her empirical research shows. 
the Conservative government has the research already there. It's all there for them to read and see if they bothered to. But instead, they're being driven by their own ideological beliefs on the health service, going for what they've called a health service revolution, extraordinarily radical, without studying the effects of what they're doing. And on this occasion, I think it's quite disgraceful that they've ignored Carol Proper's research, which really would put them on the right path. I think it's clear that in line with some of the international literature, the kind of competition regime that we've got at the moment, which is free choice of hospitals, but free choice at a fixed price, has worked in England. There are, there's not only the studies that we've done here at Bristol, but there are studies by um, researchers at the LSE that come to more or less the same conclusion. So it appears that that policy has worked. Um, so I think that the suggestion is that perhaps we should simply keep the policy as it is and continue to have competition between hospitals being encouraged but at a fixed price.